OK, so now that we have our character tables, let's talk about how we can use the character tables to then uh, talk about the basis sets that we're, we're going to be using in the rest of the class, whether they be you know, orbitals, or atoms, or bonds, vibrations, et cetera, et cetera. So the point is, again, that if we have our basis set of n elements, our symmetry operations will end up being n by n matrices, which, as we saw in class, is really hard to work with. Um, so again, we can use the traces and the characters. And what we want to do is then be able to block diagonalize them into their own individual. So these are our EREPs. So uh, I'll give an example. But the point that you should have in mind is that any reducible representation, so I'll call this gamma red. So representation will be called in the capital gamma, and we'll say this is reducible. Um, is a linear combination, linear combo of EREPs in that point group. So each of these EREPs uh, that make up the block diagonalized reducible representation we could find as a row in the character table for that point group. So let's give an example. Um, yes, here's an example. We did C3V in our last video. We knew that the reducible representation, aka the traces of the symmetry operations for the 3x3 three three matrices corresponding to XYZ, so the, basis, the, the three, order 3 basis of XYZ, um, this is going to be something. But what we, we found was that if we were to convey it in our C3V, representation. So C3V has three classes, E, 2C3, and 3 sigma V. Our gamma XYZ, if you remember, was 3, 0, 1. And I'm going to redraw the character table here. So this was our reasonable representation. But from the character table, we knew that A1 is 1 EREP. A2 is another one, 1, 1, minus 1. So again, the two. Uh, in the subscript of this Mulliken symbol for A2 means that it's anti-symmetric with respect to the sigma v. Because it's plus 1 under C3, it's an A rather than a B. And then our last EREP was 2 minus 1, 0. And then this 2 means that it's an E symmetry EREP. And so what we were able to do was we were able to break this gamma xyz down into A1 plus E. And then as you can see, this is because when we block diagonalized it, we saw that the z's were, z always transformed by itself. But x and y transform together. And therefore, when you add these two together, we see that 2 minus 1, 0 plus 1, 1, 1 equals 3, 0, 1. So it's a linear combination of the a1 and e up. So they must add up to the proper reducible representation that we have over here. Um, and I'll also point out that the order, it's the character under E for our gamma reducible is the order. So there's got to be the number of things in there. So we have three things, x, y, and z. And it's because E EREP has an order 2, and the A1 EREP has an order of 1. So altogether, we still have three things uh, there. OK, so we did this by inspection, which is we were able to kind of look at which EREPs we have and find out which ones add up to gamma x, y, z. There is a more quantitative way to do that. And we'll kind of go through that here. But let me erase this right side. So the formula is, if you want to know, OK, so how many of each EREP there is. So let's call this uh, A sub i. So A is the coefficient. And i is for each EREP. Um, the formula is equals 1 over h sum over r n r chi r chi i r. So let me actually color code this. So OK. What we're saying is the number of each number of each EREP 
i. And then here again, this is the, h is the order of the point group. r is summing across all operations. Um, so here I added this n. This n term is just a coefficient for the number of operations in each class. We didn't use it last time because we actually, we actually considered each element within the, each class. You could also do it this way, same thing. So this is the coefficient of the class. So for example, the coefficient of C3 is 2, the coefficient of sigma v is 3, because there's three uh, symmetry operations within that class. And then here is the, this is the character for the reducible representation. And then this is the character for the irrep that we're looking at. OK. So let's consider our gamma xyz, which again is 3, 0, 1 as our example. So let me rewrite that here. So gamma xyz equals 3, 0, 1. So what we're going to do is we're going to go across the row and then multiply e, like the 3 by the character of e, uh, character under this e column for the e reduced representation that we're looking at, and then adding across. So, so let's let's try this example. So, first question is how many, how many, and then let's try a ones. So, our i is the a a one e rep, and we're counting a, which is little a, which is the number of a ones that are within this reducible representation. So this is going to be equal to one over six, which is again the order of C three B because there's six operations, and then we're going to sum across. So, this will be for the coefficient e is 1, so it's going to be 1, and then we're going to multiply that by 3, which is the character of e of the reducible representation. And then our last one is going to be the character under e of the a1 irreducible representation. And then we're going to add, let's see, plus, coefficient is 2 for the C3 class. The character under the reducible representation is 0 character under uh, 1 for C3 is 1. And then last one is the, co the coefficient is 3 times 1 times 1. So as you can see, this is 3 plus 3 equals 6. So this equals, when you divide by 6, is 1. So what this means is we have 1a1 EREPs within this reduced representation. So we're saying gamma XYZ equals A1 plus something else. We can do the same thing for A2, which is 1 over times 1 times 3 times 1 plus 2 times 0 times 1 plus 3 times uh, 1. And in this case, the character under sigma v for the a2 is times negative 1. So overall, this is 0. So what this means is that a2 is not a component in the reduced representation of gamma xyz. And our last one is how many e's? So we do 1 over 6. And again, this is 1 times 3. In this case, it's times 2. And then plus 2 times 0 times minus 1, oops, this parentheses, plus 3 times 1 times 0. So overall, these go to 0. This is 6. This is 1 over 6. So this equals 1. So therefore, at the very end, we're able to show that gamma xyz equals, indeed, a1 plus e. So this is how we reduce a reduced representation down into a sum of irreducible representations. And so therefore, we've, we've block diagonalized our matrix. And this is how we're going to use character tables from now on to apply to more complicated basis sets.